what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Monday, December 13th, 2021. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Adi Oye Jr. Joining me is radio personality, TV personality, and video game analyst in Puerto Rico, Frankie Lopez, better known as Hambo. Frankie, how's it going? <laughs> oh, man, it's so awesome to be here. I love Kind of Funny. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for so long and then suddenly have the opportunity to be here with you, bro. It's like freaking awesome. Hyped, yeah. hyped. Hell yeah. Yeah, I love having you here. You're somebody who I've known for the last year because you were part of last year's uh, The Game Awards Future Class, which is how we met because we both were included in that. Uh, yeah. And since then, right, like I've gotten to know you through like Zoom calls and different meetups that we've done through Future Class. And I got to finally meet you in real life this last weekend as we were both down there for The Game Awards. And yeah. I got to chop it up with you. Like as, as I was talking with you, I was like, man, we got to get this guy on content because this guy is incredible. So for those who might not be aware of who Hambo is, who are you? What do you do? Well, man, for the past 15 years, I've been uh, talking about the gaming industry uh, as an analyst, analyst, journalist. I've written for newspapers in Puerto Rico. I have my own uh, media platform called Yo Soy Un Gamer. Uh, we have a TV show in Telemundo. Uh, oh my God. Uh, I got like three daily segments uh, in radio in four different radio stations. So, yeah, I talk a lot about video games. That's basically what I do. But um, I've also had the opportunity to, to uh, like push the, the development of the gaming industry in Puerto Rico, in game development and esports, you know, like being an advocate and talking to the governor and uh, all sorts of things, man. I'm everything gaming. What can I say? Yeah, I will say one thing I love about uh, our work from home setups and doing uh, calls with people on Discord is that I get to see their background. And I love your, I love <clears throat> the design of your background right now. Like, it's always good to see the, pe the personality that people bring in. And yours almost reminds me a little bit of, of Snowbike Mike's, but you have like a good depth of feel where it's like it's, it's blurred out in the background. Like, I, I love it. So I had to compliment that real Dude, quick. Dude, that's that's the thank you. That's the camera. I'll tell you the truth. I mean, the lens. <laughs> I bought a lens for that okay. just for that because I felt it was flat you know and i and i, I understand the perception of, of death so i was like i gotta figure out a way on how to do it i love my collection i love people looking at the collection but to tell you the truth i like it better like this i'm a no. halo fan dude that's like dude i was gonna ask halo. like what is what is like the thing in your collection behind you that like is your favorite thing to, that you have there halo man also i like uh, it's crazy is that halo controller what what is what's I, back to that halo Thing. It's how you, you, you have to understand. I've got every, I think, I think I've spent close to $2,500 this year in Halo stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> this year alone. But I've, I've been collecting Halo since, wow, uh, I'd say like 2007, I think. Oh man. Have you yeah. touched the campaign yet? Excuse me? Have you touched the Halo Infinite campaign yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. I've been how playing it, dude. It? I, I'm, I'm loving it. Also, this is this is exactly what I wanted to play. <laughs> As I've been playing it in Legendary, mm -hmm. so um, uh, you know it's not that easy. So, but I, but I'm enjoying that. Uh, so yeah, but I'm extremely uh, psyched about what's now and what will come. Um, in the future for Halo Infinite, because as we can see and we learn every single day, so there's so many things that they had to put aside just to get it out. Uh, that it's it's like all right, man, you're going to keep giving us content constantly for the next two years. So, yeah, let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, before you mentioned that you, you've done stuff for, for TV, radio, I want to ask you yeah. a, bit, a bit more about that because that sounds super fascinating. What, sure. what is the show that you do that's on Telemundo? Okay, it's called Josium Gamer. It's it's our media platform. Uh, Josium Gamer in Telemundo, Josium Gamer in radio. So our segments, that's how they're called. Basically, everything that... Uh, we do, it's branded as Yo Soy Un Gamer. In, in English, that means I'm a gamer, mm -hmm. all right? So it, it, it's fun because one of the things that happened when I started this 15 years ago, it, it was the profile that people had of gamers, right? How they looked and stuff like that. So the when the way I went at it to change people's perspective was that I, 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 when I had the hair, I'd had a mohawk with lines and I always had my glasses on and I had this rocker WWE style and my, my shirt had a spray painted like graffiti type, mm. like Joe Soyun Gamer. So like when people looked at me, they went like, oh dude, that guy's a gamer? Really? <laughs> That's, That's not awesome. normal. Yeah. 
That's awesome. Well, I'm excited. To, uh, I'm excited to talk to you more about video games. I'm excited for us to like, you know, get expose you to our audience because, like, I know you were over there with your audience. You're you're, you're already very huge. You're already doing great things. I've heard about the great things you've been doing over the last year, and I'm excited to chop it up with you for a little bit. But before we do, I want to ask you one one last question, and you might have sure. already answered it. I'm not even sure yet. What is your favorite game of all time? It's Halo Two. Okay, there That's you go. That's it. It's Halo Two. Love oh, it. Yeah. Enjoy it. Uh, love to play it again uh, with the Master Chief Collection. So I'm I'm just hyped about uh, Halo. That's it. <laughs> what can Hell I yeah. say, bro? Yeah. Well, Frankie, enough about that. Let's talk about today's stories, which include brand new official face plays for the PS5, for spoken previews, and more. Because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. It's new week at 10 a.m. live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to Kind of funny.com slash you're wrong if you don't want to watch live you can watch later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily remember you can use epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like rocket league and fortnite to help support the channel to be a part of the show to patreon.com slash kind of funny games or bronze members or above get to write in and silver members or above get the show ad free with the exclusive daily post show housekeeping for you this is our last week of regular content for the year before we go on break the last piece of content that'll be dropping on the kind of funny games channel will be the blessing show and that'll be dropping on monday the 20th so that is next monday uh, and then we're taking two weeks off for the christmas and new year's break and the holiday break and then we will be back on january third so be aware of that um but we do have some exciting stuff going up this week like ps i love you xoxo that is recording later today and you still have time to write in it's episode 100 and we're celebrating uh, with our second annual playstation awards for the year that'll go live for everyone on tuesday over on youtube and on podcast services and greg miller will be making his big return on that episode so get hyped for that Thank you to our Patreon producers, Pranksy, Blackjack, and Greg Miller returns to content next month. Nick should quit now. Today we're brought to you by Credit Karma, Amazon Music, Green Chef, and Butcher Box. But we'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have five stories today. A baker's dozen. Starting with our number one, some exciting PlayStation news. We're getting some new PlayStation 5 faceplates and controllers. I'm going to pull from oh, Michael shit. McWherter at Polygon. And before I even get into that, uh, Frankie, like, what, what is your history with PlayStation? Do you have a PS5? Do you care about faceplates? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, of course, bro. That's how I, yeah. I do have a PlayStation 5, but the faceplates, uh, we need to talk about that. Because I'm not sure if this is exactly uh, what I wanted to hear. But let's go. Oh, okay. Interesting. I'm excited to hear more. Let me read the, the news story. Uh, Kevin does have the video playing in the background for those who are watching the video. Sony will finally let PlayStation 5 owners have something other than a white console, officially. New console covers in multiple colors, Midnight Black, Cosmic Red, Nova Pink, Starlight Blue, and Galactic Purple, will go on sale in January, letting PS5 owners customize the console in fun, long overdue ways. That color customization will cost $54.99 US dollars, and Sony says PS5 owners can, quote, simply remove your original white PS5 console covers and click your new ones into place, end quote. The company did not announce plans to sell the PS5 with those new colors out of the box. It's an add-on for now. And while Sony already sells the DualSense controller in Midnight Black and Cosmic Red, it'll release three new colorways for the PS5 controller to match its new console covers. Nova Pink, Starlight Blue, and Galactic Purple DualSense controllers will also go on sale in January. Hambo, what, what, what are your thoughts on, the, on these PS5 faceplates? All right, so uh, there's a lot to take in from this. Uh, first of all, I'll have the colors. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that are going crazy about them, uh, especially if I've, I've got some people that follow me, uh, girls that were going like, oh, yeah, pink, freaking awesome. And I'm like, yeah, that's like hype, of course. Now, the, the part that I'm like a little bit troubled with, with this is that the first thing that we have as plates are like, uh, you know, solid colors. I actually wanted to see something in the collectible side. I said, I'm hyped for collectibles. Mm. I am a collector. And 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 uh, having the console change uh, from white to blue or white to purple is not the way I would love to do it. You know, I would really love to have like a Horizon Forbidden West or, or maybe a Gran Turismo that's coming up as well. 
So it, that's my take on it. I would love to have that type of things because now it's possible. Now it's a matter of uh, I'll keep buying them. You know, you give me Horizon now, then you give me God of War Ragnarok and I'll buy it as well. And then you give me Spider-Man and I'll buy it as well. And, and I get to change them as I like. And, and that's awesome. Uh, of course, I, I'm always thinking like, why didn't you think, sorry, why did you even have to go through the the issues you did with dbrand and why did you have to put the patent so why didn't you think about this why didn't you even uh, have something ready for launch you know like mm, yeah that's the, all the things that go through my mind when i'm thinking about the plates but hey man they're finally here you get to you get to buy them <laughs> yeah no i i definitely feel that i think in terms of in terms of the colors i do love the colors like i this is one of those rare situations where usually when like new colors just for a thing release i'm like cool one or two might, might might do it for me i want every single one of these colors like the light blue i i love the pink as well the purple the red like i already have the the red dual sense controller and mm -hmm. i love how it looks in person i love the the midnight black one i think this is a good collection of colors i'm right there with you in terms of what i want from the face plates like i i would love a Horizon Forbidden West style, uh, like lim limited edition faceplate for the PS5. I think there's so much you can do with that. I think you can have a God of War Ragnarok one when that comes through. I think we could have had a Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart uh, PS5 faceplate. And I think I I think there are, I think there's a reason why they didn't have it at launch. I think there's a couple reasons. One, I think leading into launch there was already a lot uh, on the table in terms of the things that they needed to get done and the things that like it, it seems like launch was down to the wire in terms of hey we got to get these things out the door because now with covid now with the pandemic you know we we have less supplies to work with i think that's part of it and i also think that sony with playstation strikes me a bit like how apple views the iphone where they're not as big about customization and um each person's individual use i think they like they, they view their brand and they view their console as hey, like this is the experience. This is the premium experience. We're going to give you, we're going to tell you what you want and what you need and you are going to enjoy it for that as opposed to like, I feel like Xbox, we talk about all the time, right? Xbox is like, yo, play how you want. You know, if you want to play Xbox games on your PC, go ahead and do that. Whereas PlayStation yeah. is like, nah, man, we're, go we're going to guide you along this slow process. Year one, you're going to get the basic white PS5. Year two, you're finally going to get face plates. I think we're for sure going to get the more unique face plates, but I don't think, I think that might be a year three thing. I think we still have to wait some time, which is a bummer because I'm right there with you that that's something that I absolutely want. I think that would be incredible. Uh, I also look at this and I'm saying like, okay, so if, if going back to dbrand and what they did with the dark plates and changing even the design to add their own thing to it, um, I'm looking at this and I'm going like, okay, is this, is this like the best they could have done? Uh, could mm -hmm. this have been like a missed opportunity to maybe fix something or add, you know, uh, something to it to, to make it even, I, I won't say unique, but like uh, to make sure that the air flows right, you know? Um, I don't know, it's, it's just one of those things where I, uh, because you can change them, I see that there's a whole bunch of potential of things that could happen while the PlayStation 5 still uses the same design, right? Because uh, that's another thing, maybe, uh, you know, maybe in three years we go like, now there's a PlayStation 5 Pro and it changed how it looks and now there's other plates and there's other stuff. But at this point, I think they can play a lot with it uh, even you know what? Yeah, and this is more, this is me going into the collector side again. But I I I, I always think you know how they make custom PCs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It, that they design it as they want and they can add different uh stuff to it including like they grab sometimes even toys and put them in there and you know fuse everything together I, i'm always looking at what's going to happen next uh, and this right here is an opportunity for them to move forward with it and, and you know what the, what i wanted to ask you about is how do you feel about the price I think the pr the price doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. This very much strikes me as a, hey, this is PlayStation first party and we're doing this in-house. And so we're going to make you pay for it, right? For like this customizable <laughs> thing. And so it doesn't yeah. surprise me. I do wish it was cheaper. I think that, I, I think the 55 bucks um, for it makes people go, all right, well, I guess I'll get the one that I want. I, I want to live in a world where I get all of these, honestly. I want to get five, five of them. I don't like, I there's no point of it because I have one PS5, and so what am I going to do? Rotate every single month? I know it's a ridiculous. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah like yeah. there's no reason for me, like practical reason for me to want to get all five, other than the fact that I really like the five colors. Um, but with the price point, I'm not going to get all five. I might get one. Um, like I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still deciding on what I'm going to do with that. But yeah, like the, the price is is a little bit high, but I 
I think it's to be expected for what this is and what PlayStation is, how they're going about it. What about you? What does price do for you? I I feel the same way. I just feel that they're going to make their money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that's what's up. Also, that's why you do this. You, you have to make sure that you're making money. Uh, but um, the same way as you see it, I, I think that if I was to buy one, and it, I would just go for one and that's it. And mm. probably like change them and put like, let's say I buy the blue and probably this month I'll have all blue and then next month one plate blue, one plate white, whatever, uh, just because to make it look different in my set and that's it. But I don't see any reason why you would keep on changing them uh, in colors unless you're a streamer. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That you're trying to make it like- Unless you're trying to be flashy or show off Exactly, or exactly. Yeah, I think, that's I, basically I, I, it. I think in terms of the collection aspect too, I think the that's kind of what the controllers are for as well. Like I, 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 there is more of a reason to buy multiple of the controllers to want to buy all the controllers and collect them. And looking at Kevin, if you're able to, because I have it linked at the bottom of the, the doc uh, to the article that has the images of the controllers with the different colors. I love how these controllers look as well. I really want pretty much all of these. I really want the pink one. I really want the purple one, especially. I think those look really good. Um, and like this, this has been a big ask for us for a while more controller colors i I like them starting off with the with the midnight black and the cosmic red but even that felt like only uh like a a little bit right i wanted more um and i think a lot of people wanted way more for the different controller colors and so i'm i'm all about this uh and again like controllers are expensive right so like we're running at 75 bucks for the the dual sense controllers which the dual sense was already expensive because it's the dual sense uh yeah but man like I'm, i'm i'm all about this i think these look dope as hell yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like them as well. I like the yeah. colors. I, I even like it. You know what? The one that I like the most, I like the pink one the most, to tell you the truth. It, it kind of like it pops, it pops out, right? Yeah, like it really pops, honestly. Like I, 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 like, I really dig it. Frankie, with your background, too, you get a blue one on one side and a pink one on the other side and have it right there in the middle, splitting the, you know, it's cool. A lot of there cool options, guys. A lot of cool yeah, options. No, dude, I've got all sorts of options because if it if I just go like today's one of those days and I'm going there like, I'm, go. I'm feeling, you know, uh, red and green, I can go Look red. Look at that. <laughs> Look at this fancy guy. God, you love to love see it. it. Frankie, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's talk a little bit about Forspoken with story number two. Uh, oh, yeah. A Forspoken preview embargo went up today. We got a preview roundup for you. I'm going to get a poll from two different sources because, because with previews, it's more about the detail than the final verdicts. And so I want to pull from both Matt Kim and IGN, and I'll eventually pull from Imran Khan over there at Fanbyte. But to start off with Matt Kim, uh, Matt Kim wrote this. Regardless of how you felt about it, Final Fantasy XV was certainly an eccentric take on the classic JRPG series when it combined hallmarks of the fantasy genre with an American road trip. The developers behind Final Fantasy XV are now working under the banner Luminous Productions and are taking a similar genre-bending approach to their next game, Forspoken. In a hands-off presentation, IGN was able to get a better sense of what Forspoken is. And to be perfectly frank, it looks more like an open-world RPG in the vein of Assassin's Creed and The Witcher than anything I've seen previously from Square Enix. The presentation was hands-off, but the gameplay we saw will be familiar to anyone who has played a modern open-world RPG. Protagonist Frey is seen traversing overland to various waypoints and mission markers. There appear to be several points of interest Frey can explore, and no limit to where she can't or she can or can't venture towards. Along the way, Frey will encounter various enemies and monsters in the wild. Combat is completely real-time and primarily magic-based. Frey can cycle through a collection of magic spells and fight enemies with a variety of long-range and close-range attacks, whether that's firing lightning bolts uh, from afar or dashing close to hit enemies with a magic sword. Uh, that's Matt Kim at IGN. That was a lot of laying out what exactly Forspoken for is. Uh, I want to hop into Imran, which is a little bit more opinion-based, but before I hop into that, Frankie, where are you at with First Spoken? Is this a game that you're excited for? And uh, what do these previews do for you so far? Okay, so yes, I'm excited for for, for, for Spoken. And mm. the reason why, it's because lately I've been listening to audiobooks uh, that are uh, lit RPG, literature RPGs, okay? Mm. And the story behind them are that, let's say, you're in your house and you're using the next, like, Ready Player One type VR headsets, and then suddenly, yeah, you get you get sucked in into a game and whatnot. And so after uh, reading a whole bunch of them, which I will say, like 
uh, seven or eight, uh, I'm looking at, at this and I'm saying like, oh, this transition of this girl is suddenly sucked in and thrown in this place. Now you have magic and everything is going crazy and it's going to be open world and you're going to be able to do so many things. Well, to, I'm like, I'm all in on it, you know, and it looks really cool as well. But I, I like just the the way that she's speaking as, as all the trailers that I've seen, uh, how she speaks and you're, you can see that she's somewhere where she's not familiar, but she still sounds like she's in New York or something like that. So I freaking yeah. love it. I'm loving yeah. it, man. I got to, so I got to attend this preview event. Uh, and like mentioned in the, in the IGN article, right? It was hands off. It was a presentation where the devs got to talk about for spoken for the first part. And then they eventually showed uh, some gameplay and I'm right there with you that I think from the get go, I was fairly, I was fairly interested in for spoken just off of the, how unique and, interesting the concept is as a hey you, you are playing as Frey who is from New York City she gets pulled into a fantasy world and you know the way that she talks and interacts with everything in this world feels foreign right it feels different from uh, uh, from what this world is that combined with the traversal stuff I thought looked really cool in the initial stuff and after seeing the preview I think that stuff still looks cool um, I got more to say about it but I do want to hear from Imran Khan over at Fanbyte who wrote their own preview uh, and it reads like this the bulk of, game, of the gameplay demo took place in a city called Sepal, which is a safe haven from what the game calls The Break, which is both an area and the name of an event that caused that area. Sepal itself looks to only, only barely be holding it together as Frey darts around the city's ruined structures. She, she, when she leaves the town, Frey enters the aforementioned Break, which is a trans, transformative uh, atmosphere that turns people and animals in it into wraith-like creatures. The demoer took Freya into a large storm-like area in the break, wherein they quickly got overwhelmed by high-level monsters and bosses, despite expertly combining spells in battle. Square Enix also introduced the Tantas, or the Tantas, uh, evil sorceresses who were driven mad by the break and act as the antagonists of the game. The structure of the game appears to be your general open-world fare of finding main missions and side quests from NPCs to explore the world at large. The hook is the parkour system, which is powered by Frey's magic, she seamlessly makes tall leaps over giant chasms and tall towers alike, but requires player input to do a lot of her cooler moves. Leveling up makes the parkour last longer, so Frey can travel faster the stronger she becomes. Overall, I'm not sure if I needed to be more sold on Forspoken, but I'm definitely interested in playing it still. There's a number of unanswered questions, but my two major issues with Final Fantasy XV were movement and story, and those at, the, those at least seem to be Luminous Studios' two major focuses this time around. And I agree with Imran there, that I think in terms of movement and story, I think those are the two things that in intrigue me the most. Um, the actual open world gameplay, I thought, looked fine from the preview that they showed. It reminded me a bit of horizon zero dawn you know i think the other articles uh mentioned assassin's creed right something like that i got a lot yeah. of horizon from it just in terms of you know you're going through you are using a lot of um projectile attacks like your combat seems to be wholly um uh magic based in terms of the kind of attacks you're doing and so it's not, it's, it's a lot of casting it's a lot of like shifting between different types of elemental attacks and it seems like it's a lot of aoe um from the preview i'm gonna to be honest like by the time i finished it I was kind of like, all right, cool. Like this looks like more forespoken. Like there was nothing there. There was there was nothing hook wise that grabbed me in and made me more excited about the game. It looked like more of what they showed already, just on just on a I guess a more like expanded level of like actually going through the break in the op in the open world. Uh, and the open world seems like it's going to be fairly like combat focused in a way where where when you're out in a Horizon Zero Dawn, it is you running into machines, it is you running into like you know things to fight and all that. But it seemed like it seemed like there was going to be more combat than actual like and like meeting up with NPCs and talking to them. It seemed like that was going to be condensed into Sepal or the more um, populated areas of the world. And so I have a lot of questions about that and about how like all right, is this going to feel like I'm exploring a world or is this going to feel like I am? taking questions to Paul and then going out into the world to fight things and then bring those quests back. Uh, I got a lot of questions about that, but you know, overall it seemed fine. It seemed like another open world action game, which I'm down for. Okay. So I, I've got some questions to you. What's up? <laughs> so you're saying that you're, it was fine for you. Mm -hmm. You're saying it was, it's okay. It was cool. It's fine. Yeah. It's cool. It's no problem. But this is, if this is an open world, once again, they're expecting people to invest a whole bunch of time on it. If something at this point hasn't catch your attention, what can? 
Sai, if you just had like a, a preview, uh, a detailed preview of the game and it didn't catch your attention, so what do you think they're missing? What do they need for people to uh, feel excited about it? I think it, there are a few things. I think the story setup is interesting, but I'm not, I don't have the promise yet of it evolving into something that is going to actually capture me. So far, so far from what we've gotten from the story and what I've gotten from the story through the preview is, is that, okay, yeah, you're playing as Frey and she's out in the world and, you know, she's doing, she's in the fantasy world as a modern person. What is that like? Um, everything that they presented so far in the world and in the story sounds like things I've heard before. Uh, and so I think I'm waiting, I'm waiting for some kind of like hook beyond just, you know, fray in this big fantasy world. I think that's first and foremost. I want to see more interesting stuff with the story. I think also I want to see where upgrades go in terms of abilities because they've shown off um, some combat stuff that we've seen before in trailers and they showed off um, parkour. It seems like what they were showing off, I couldn't tell if it was like high level parkour, high level, you know, action, or if it was, I, I assumed it was more so of like the lower to mid level from what we were seeing. I want to see what it looks like at the high level because the area of effect combat stuff that they were showing me to me personally just didn't didn't seem as fun as and as interesting it reminds me a little bit of gardens of the galaxy where in that game in the combat it is a lot of you commanding like gamora and Trax and your in in your party and you throwing out commands and the commands happening on screen and i think what that resulted in gardens of the galaxy was at times just a mess of oh yeah button mash throughout the, the commands and, and let whatever happens happens as opposed to feeling super involved, right? I want the combat and I want that experience to feel super involved uh, in Forspoken. And I've not gotten that impression yet that it's going to go beyond, hey, throughout this spell that's like a water bubble that holds your holds an enemy throughout this lightning spell, like throughout, throughout X, Y, and Z thing in, in order to like, you know, ma mainly manage the space as opposed to feeling like you are involved deeply in the action um i think part of that is their rpg roots right coming off of final fantasy 15 yeah. you know that being a grpg style game with i think real-time action kind of funny i'm such wrong if i'm wrong about that i think a lot of that carries over um but i hope for what this game looks like and strikes me as which is a little bit more along the lines of an assassin's creed or a horizon i just hope that it the combat feels fun and good um and i've not gotten that impression yet from the game I understand, man. I like, it's the kind of things that should worry when you're talking about open worlds. I like, this is like, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can compare to. So suddenly you're not being, if you're not being a innovative in any kind of way, and you're just like uh, working the routes that everybody else has done, then uh, there's a probability that people will not, you know, bite into it. Uh, I'm, I'm into it just because of what I told you. But I don't know if everybody else feels the same way. So it would be cool to know. Yeah. And I, I think one thing I wanted, I want more of too is like the the writing team on this game seems stacked just in terms of you have Amy Hennig who's done work on it. You have Gary Whitta who's done work on it. And you have the the, the Square Enix Luminous team that is, that is doing work on it as well, right? Like they are, they're propping up the writing and the narrative and stuff a lot in the game. And I just want them to deliver. I think that's my main thing. I want to pull one more tidbit from uh, Imran Khan at Fanboy, okay. who we, again we both were at the preview, and I there was one of the one of there was one thing said that like I took note of, and I was like, hmm, that's a weird thing to say. And I was wondering if anybody else caught it. Imran Khan caught it. And I saw some other people who went to the event caught it as well. But I want to pull from Imran in his article. He writes okay. this. The event began with Forspoken's performance and voice director Tom Keegan talking about Belinska's uh, talent. Belinska is the actress who plays Frey. Uh, talking okay. about Belinska's talent for making lead characters Frey come to life, or lead character Frey come to life. Keegan, who has worked on games like Star Wars Battlefront 2 and Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, said that Belinska naturally gave Frey a, quote, very hip hoppy kind of walk, end quote. Huh. Uh, I asked Square Enix representatives what this meant, but the question was not included in the post-event FAQs given, even though most uh, most other singular questions asked during the event were. And that was the thing, when 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 they said that quote, that was the thing where I was like, what does that mean? I don't understand what that means. <laughs> and I also wanted to know a, a lot of, so I'm glad Imran caught it as well and asked, and they seem, seemingly just didn't answer. Um, but that was one thing that I thought was a little bit worrisome, because like for those who haven't been paying attention to For Spoken, right? Main character, Frey, is a black woman. And from what we've seen of the writing team, like I don't believe that there's any black folks working on the game, on the narrative, on the writing. Uh, and so I, like, I think it's one of those things where I'm like, all right, I just hope this is done well. Like, I don't want to write it off as like, this is going to be bad, but I, 
for them to have the quote, oh yeah, she had like a very, you know, hip hoppy kind of walk and nobody would catch that in this presentation, especially for something that it was pre-recorded. It wasn't live, right? This is a thing that they prepared and presented to us. I would have thought that somebody would have caught that because if you're going to say that, you got to explain what that means. And to say that without saying what that means feels kind of weird just in the sense of like, all right, like what is the connection there? What exactly are you trying to say? Uh, yeah. yep, dude. I don't know, man. That's one of those things that uh, it's how they apply it and what they're looking forward to do uh, when when you're going as free and she's going a bit about herself and what type. I think it's more about the vibe, you know, yeah. because it, 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 you immediately think, why do you have to immediately think that because she's a black person, it has to do it has to be a hip hoppy kind yeah. of way. You exactly. know what I'm saying? It's not, exactly. So that's 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 the part where maybe that's why they said it, because they're going in that direction. Like mm. uh, th if she's from New York and she's hip hoppy, then that's the way they're going. That's what we should expect. I, I think that's basically it. Uh, um, I, I don't know. I don't know the the uh, voice actress, uh, Balinska. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is she is she uh, she's a black is she, woman. She's a black woman, so yes. dude, uh, maybe she could have gone uh, other ways, or maybe they they tried different directions before deciding like this one is the one that sticks to the persona and what she, than the story she's going to be telling. So uh, maybe that's why she they just mm. like uh, threw that in. Yeah, yeah, and that's I, I think I, it's 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 always rough when you know you look at a team and there is that lack of diversity and there is an attempt to like want to portray somebody right portray, portray portray you know a black person or a person of color or like portray anybody that feels outside of what the team working on it is uh and so yeah like i I, it, it seems like an attempt to be like, hey, you know, we are trying to be true to who this person is, or we're trying to represent. Maybe it is like a New York thing, right? She's from New York, so we're trying to, yeah. you know, have that New York attitude there. Um, I just thought it was an interesting thing to have in there to say, and then like not nobody catch it, nobody be like, hey, maybe we should reword this, or maybe we should do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I see what you but, mean. Yeah, but that is me, uh, Frankie. Before we move on to the next news story, I want to remind everybody out there that you can go to patreoncom slash games where you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Butcher Box. If you ask me, the holidays are all about winning, whether that means getting the best gifts or cooking the best food. And when it comes to serving up the best holiday meals, especially meat, quality matters. Every month, Butcher Box ships a curated selection of high quality meat straight to your home with free shipping in the continental US. There's no antibiotics or added hormones, and each box contains between 8 to 14 pounds of meat, depending on what you choose. I love Butcher Box. Recently, me and G got some of this and oh man the steak was fantastic i just love meat and butcher box makes that love a reality in my household this holiday butcher box is giving new members one pack of bacon for free in every box plus 20 dollars off each box for the first five months of your membership that's free bacon for life and up to a hundred dollars off sign up at butcherbox.com slash kfgd that's butcherbox.com slash kfgd b-u-t-c-h-e-r box.com slash kfgd next up shout out to green chef green chef is america's number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you not the other way around green chef makes cooking easy so you can spend less time planning and prepping and more time eating delicious home cooked meals plus green chef has options that fit every lifestyle keto paleo vegan vegetarian fast and fit mediterranean and gluten-free giving everybody options from blessing to kevin and his family with paula being a vegetarian uh green chef is now owned by Helen. HelloFresh, and between the two of them, there's now something to choose for literally everyone. Both HelloFresh and Green Chef are awesome, so sometimes that choice is a little hard in a good way. Uh, I've been loving Green Chef every once in a while. Gia Cook said it's been a wonder for, for Cool Greg and Blessing, like I was saying. Go to greenchef.com slash KFGD10 and use code KFGD10 to get 10 free meals, including free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash KFGD10 and code KFGD10 to get 10 free free meals and free shipping green chef the number one meal kit for eating well next up shout out to credit karma if you've ever applied for a credit card or personal loan and been rejected you know how frustrating it is and how dang often it seems to happen that's why credit karma is changing the way people find and apply for cards and loans whether you're refinancing credit card debt or paying for an upcoming expense credit karma uses your credit data to show you fresh personal loan offers that are personalized just for 
you. Members who compare loan offers on Credit Karma save an average of 30% on interest rates. That's a lot. Uh, it's totally free and easy to sign up for a Credit Karma account with no effect on your credit score. Credit Karma will even show you your approval odds so you can choose offers that you're more likely to get approved for and apply with more confidence. On Credit Karma, you can check out multiple loan offers side by side with easy to compare estimated terms. Ready to apply? Head to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to see personalized offers with your approval odds right now. Go to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to find the loan for you. That's C-R-E-D-I-T-K-A-R-M-A.com slash loan offers. And finally, shout out to Amazon Music. You clearly have great taste in podcasts because you're listening to this right now, but why not try out Amazon Music? Amazon Music has more than 10 million free podcast episodes to listen to, but it's not just podcasts. They also have thousands of music stations and top playlists to stream for free. You can try out Amazon Music Unlimited that gives you unlimited access to over 75 million songs, plus podcasts, music videos, and more with unlimited skips. I have been getting hype for Spider-Man No Way Home coming out uh, and I've been listening to a lot of the scores of previous Marvel movies uh, from Marvel Studios projects and I've been listening to it all using Amazon Music. Uh, if you've never tried Amazon Music Unlimited, now is a great time for a limited time. New customers can try Amazon Music Unlimited free for three months. No credit card required. Just go to Amazon.com slash KFGD. That's Amazon.com slash KFGD to try Amazon Music Unlimited free for three months. Amazon.com slash KFGD. Renews automatically cancel anytime terms apply hey but let's talk about story number three but before we do you mentioned during the break that you wanted to give a quick shout out yeah, yeah. I want to do it in Spanish, though. Eh, quiero saludar a todas las personas que nos están escuchando en estos momentos, están conectadas con nosotros, eh, que hablan en español, ya sea que están en Latinoamérica, Estados Unidos o Puerto Rico, que es de donde yo soy. Eh, muchas bendiciones y gracias por estar conectado y escucharnos un ratito aquí en Kind of Funny Games. Así que vamos a darle. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm, sure, dude, I'm sure our Spanish listeners are going to love that so much. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate you. All Good right, day. let's jump into story number three. Uh, Nintendo Switch was the best selling console in the U.S. in November. This is Matt Perslow at IGN. The NPD Group has announced that the Nintendo Switch was the best selling console in the U.S. during November 2021. Not only that, but the console remains the U.S. best selling console of 2021. In the analyst group's latest data, the Switch was reported as being the best-selling hardware platform in November, both in terms of units sold and dollars spent. 1.13 million consoles were sold during the month, uh, with 550,000 of them being sold during Thanksgiving week. This comes despite a colossal year-on-year -year decline for hardware sales. November hardware spending is down 38% to $883 million. Uh, this is the lowest total since November 2016. This is blamed on the lack of available console inventory, which is a symptom of the ongoing chip shortages. Daniel Ahmad, an analyst on Twitter, says, quote, If you want to know how bad the supply situation is, the Switch sold less than November last year. PS5 plus Xbox barely equal what Switch sold in total. And the PS4, Xbox One, and Wii U, yes, Wii U, sold more in November 2014 than Switch plus PS5 plus Xbox Series did in November 2021, end quote. As for games, Call of Duty Vanguard was November's best-selling game in the U.S. and has become the second best-selling game of the year. It's second only to its predecessor, 2020's Black Ops Cold War, which has been the biggest game of the year in the U.S., Frankie, has does any of this surprise you? Like, what does this this one the Switch's dominance do for you? But also the the console hardware shortages. What does that do do for you as well? Well, uh, there's a lot to go on in this because uh, there's strategies from the stores per se that uh, come to play in this. Like for instance, uh, I know some stores held back putting Switch or PlayStation Fives on the floor just to make sure that they had it during the uh, Black Friday weekend, you know, and make sure that people would want to be at their stores during that weekend. So uh, when you come to look at it, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. The shortage, uh, it's not cool. We, uh, we're gonna go through it until 2023, maybe, you mm -hmm. know, uh, but, but I believe that the hype behind the consoles, getting them uh, in its second year, it started in the start of its second year, it's still there. And that's great oh, yeah. for everything in gaming, you know? So the, the Nintendo Switch is selling like crazy. You know, uh, they just came out with the OLED edition, right? And and it's like everybody wants it. No, it doesn't matter if you already had the other one, they wanna change it, even though 
it's just a you know screen change and whatnot, and people mm -hmm. are just like freaking over it. it and that's, that screen screen change is, is significant though, because like as yeah, some people yeah. who follow me on Twitter know yes, that yes. over the weekend, I lost my switch. That's right during what? my trip. Yeah, during the trip, I so I don't know exactly what happened yet. I think I either. It either got lost on the plane or somebody swiped it from me. I, I don't I don't know which because I have no idea how I lost it. Um, oh but God. like I, I pulled it out on the plane because I was playing some Pokemon uh, Shining Pearl. And then like, you know, partway into the flight, I put it back in my bag, went to sleep, you know, woke up, uh, took my stuff to, to the hotel, you know, got dressed, went to the Game Awards, came back that night, opened my bag to find my Switch. And I was like, my Switch is gone. And so like the last place I had it out was the was the the airplane. And I swore I like I could have sworn I put it back in my bag, but maybe it's maybe it slid out. Maybe somebody took it out. I have no idea. Did you put what? it in front of your your seat? That could have been in the you know in the pocket. Right no, in I front? definitely didn't. I definitely did. I put I definitely okay. put it under, and so it might have slid out under under the seat under the seat. Um, but what I can confirm is that somebody definitely has played it <laughs> because I went yesterday. I finally got home yesterday, and I was like, okay, let me unlink my switch. Let me find. Let me you know make sure that I'm, I'm all good. And when I went and looked through the activity on my switch, somebody had played Tetris Effect <laughs> on my switch yesterday. Uh, and game. so whoever's it's out there, game. whoever's out there that played Tetris Effect one. You're not gonna play anymore because I unlinked it too. I hope you had fun because Tetris Effect, really good game. You know, and I hope you had a good time. And <laughs> you know, hey, you're making it is the what best it is. of it. You're making it, the best of it. I'm making the best of it. Dance. But the reason I bring that up is because uh, with that, I picked up my OG Switch because I still have my original Switch. Yeah. Which and, uh, some people wrote to me, they're like, "Oh, wasn't that gonna go to your nephew?" I am gonna buy my nephew a brand new Switch sometime in the new year. That was gonna be Christmas, but my Christmas plans got shifted. That's gonna happen still. But opening up my old Switch. That bezel is so big, and I didn't, I, I not, I didn't realize how big the bezel was until I had to switch back from my OLED to my original, yeah. and the bezel is so huge, it's ridiculous. That screen yeah. makes a lot of difference. You know that I have all three of them. I have the the oh OD, my gosh, the light that and you. the OLED. I I got them all. Uh, when when it came out, the OLED came out. We had, you know, we were like putting side by sides and all sorts. Yeah, check it out. I I am with you. If you have the OLED. It's freaking awesome, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the upgrade, I'm, I'm just not sure if it's, you know, like uh, it's an immediate worth it. Uh, knowing how Nintendo usually works and keep creating stuff around their their portable consoles, so uh, I don't know. But still, uh, I, I know people are excited for it. So there's a whole bunch of people that write to me all the time on how to get it, so they're freaking out uh, just because they come in so small portions, you know. And then it's like ten minutes later, they're out. But it, it is as I, when you look at it, PlayStation Five, place uh, Xbox Series S, which is funny. How many people are buying Xbox Series S to give it a try? Mm, Not yeah. because that's the one that they wanted. It's because they want to give it a try and they want to pack it with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, and they're like enjoying it's a great the deal. thing. It is, it is, and and people are asking me constantly, and you know, a little bit scared because these are people that are are, are used to having uh, consoles with discs, and suddenly they're like, "This is my first experience with uh, digital only." You know, like, yeah. is it cool? You say, "Well, if you're planning on using Game Pass, of course it's going to be awesome. It's like having a cell phone, man. You don't buy apps in the store; you just download them." You know, so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm not. This is not strange to me. Uh, that that it went down uh, there is a shortage it is true you know uh even though you you might see a whole bunch of stuff online people trying to sell them and whatnot also not i, I don't believe up, up to this point people are still going and paying nine hundred dollars and a thousand dollars for for playstation fives no matter what you know it's like at the, at, i get it hardcore fans at the beginning but yeah. at this point i don't know how that is going for for those resellers yeah now i mean now it's very much about uh supply and like the um, the shortages, right? And you know, we're finally seeing the shortages shortages have a massive effect on sales numbers. Because uh, like last the, last year at the launch of PS5 and Xbox Series, we saw the at least for the PS5 numbers because we had those numbers. The PS5 was outpacing the PS4 for a little bit in that first year, and now we've seen we've seen it take a step back, right? Those numbers have dipped, and it makes me wonder what those numbers would have looked like if we didn't have these shortages because it right. seems like the demand is there the demand is for sure there for the next gen consoles and you know i it's funny because I, I, I like a decade ago we were talking about um we were talking about like is console gaming dead is pc gaming taking taking over uh right now kevin is showing is this ebay kevin 
No, this is Craigslist. Just to our local oh, <laughs> in, in the Bay Area, it looks like seven fifty to a thousand dollars seems a lot, or let's say seven hundred. Uh, yeah, a lot of seven hundred dollars. Eight fifty, eight fifty. We got now, Kevin. I've been to your place before. Why does that? Why does that one look like it's, it's your floor? The um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it, it, it's funny because like a decade ago we were talking about like console show or not console show, uh, is console dead? Is PC gaming taking over? And then the PS4 and Xbox One generation was super successful, and now it seems like this generation is even more successful, right? And I think it's just, it's more evident of nah, man, gaming brands just across the board are killing it right now. Whether you are on PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, or PC, like if you if if you're playing games or if 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 you're if you're looking for a platform to be on. Regardless, it seems like that platform is doing well, and so that's I think that's good news for everybody. Yeah, yeah. even the the recent announcement that you were going to have mobile games uh, in in PC now, thanks to Google Play. So that's mm -hmm. that's awesome for me as well. I don't know if you're a mobile, uh, can we say a game player, mobile, but mobile gamer? Yeah, but I am, bro. I play yeah. on my cell phone like constantly. What are you playing? Uh, well, I'm playing a whole bunch of stuff. I'm playing Farmville Three. Okay, and actually, there's a three. This, I didn't realize there was a two. Dude, yeah, man. Hey. So Farmville three came out, and That's actually, awesome. it, it's my my first time in it. As I had never, I have never uh, played Farmville before, uh, and this is my first time in it, I, and I'm loving it. I'm also playing. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, uh, I'm playing the new uh, uh, Rocket League uh, game. The like the side scrolling one. Yeah, yeah. How, I'm is playing it good? It as, we were talking about that a few weeks ago. Is it good? Dude, it, it, they did it. So it's one mm. of those things that uh, you know what I was talking with a friend the other day and we were saying like you know what those mechanics kind of remind me of do you do you remember asteroid that yes. you had you had to be like floating around and you yeah. had to use enough to keep you like uh so you could do it right so it, it kind of feels like like that so, but mixed obviously with the the rocket league idea and uh, I just feel it's freaking awesome it's really cool I, I like it it's like one of those things that you could drop in drop out and and have fun with it uh, also I haven't been able to try it out but you know that final fantasy came out with a like a, a one of those shooters that that the battle royale the, the battery, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I downloaded it. I, I want to play it. I've been trying PUBG as well. So, yeah, I'm all over the place. I love playing in my cell phone. Got a, one of those huge ones. <laughs> oh, you, man, bro, you got all yeah. the good tech. I love that for you. Holy cow, that Good. looks awesome. I freaking love that cell phone right there. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm enjoying that as well. So, yeah, everything is going great for whatever platform, man. I, I'm, mm. Well, wait, how's Stadia doing? <laughs> We don't talk about Stadia. We don't talk about Stadia. Poor, poor guys out there. You know Man. what I mean? I feel like they gave up on it, right? Oh, for sure. They gave up when, what was it two years ago at this point? Uh, yeah, Maybe it was like six ago? months in. They were like, all right, we clearly made a mistake. Yeah, no more first party. A beta. Yeah. Yeah. But like, if you if you want cloud gaming, you know, you got that on Xbox and PlayStation Now, and you also got uh, yeah. PlayStation Now, and you also got it on like Amazon Luna, which is, you know, pretty good. So yeah, Luna's There's fun. options out there. There's options out there. Uh, I would try Luna, though. Uh, yeah. It's not available for my country. Oh, really? It's it's cool. Like I we I mean we you know um, uh, we we're sponsored. sponsored by Luna all the time, and so take my words with a grain of salt. All that, but I think the Luna Couch feature is actually yeah. I was about cool. to say the couch stuff is wild. Yeah, if Dude, you like right. local multiplayer but want to play local multiplayer online, then I think Luna Couch is honestly the best option. It's actually mm -hmm. a, a really cool feature. Gotta try but, it. Ho hopefully, they'll make it available soon in Puerto Rico. Speaking of a man with options, story number four, Henry Cavill would love to be in a Mass Effect series. This is Chris Scolian at Video Games Chronicle. Actor Henry Cavill has again associated his name with a potential upcoming Mass Effect TV series. The Superman and Witcher star teased a potential live action Mass Effect project earlier this year and has now reacted to reports that Amazon is nearing a deal to create such a series. When asked by GamesRadar if he would be interested in starring in the project, Cavill replied, quote, very much so. Yeah, all depending on how they're executing it. The world of adaptation can be heavy or light. When I like a product, I prefer the adaptation to be less changed from the source, so it all depends, end quote. Quote. Cavill also explained that he was a fan of the original Mass Effect trilogy. Quote, I did not play Andromeda. I had a go at it, but ended up being very busy, he said. I'm sure a lot of people ended up being very busy for Andromeda. Quote, but the original trilogy? Yeah, loved it. <laughs> Brilliant games. 
<laughs> it will make such a magnificent series of movies or TV shows, end quote. That, that, that is the most, like, as a celebrity, if you want to convince somebody that you actually play the video games, that is maybe the best he's done at, like, convincing people, yeah, I play this shit. Because I tried Andromeda, didn't like it, but I love the original games. He said all the right <laughs> things there. <laughs> Deadline yes, reported last month that Amazon Studios, which is responsible for creating original content for Amazon Prime Video, was nearing a deal to develop a series based on EA's best-selling sci-fi franchise uh hambo do you one did you watch the witcher series and how do you how do you like henry cavill and how do you like henry cavill as like a mass effect character okay fe- that, let's go in part first yeah. of all i didn't like i i love henry henry cavill as superman yeah but then i got mad at him it was not his fault uh, but i got mad at him because of what happened in justice league and the the retake where he had the mustache and they did the crazy thing and i was mm-hmm. like dude you're superman how can you do something like that i was like take that thing <laughs> and put some get to pay somebody to put hair by hair back or something you know like but I, I was mad at him at some point then i saw what he did as as um uh, the Witcher, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and and then I've seen everything about him, like he's uh, when he cost, was doing his own PC, uh, and the, every time that he goes into uh, and he gets the opportunity to talk about pop culture or whatever, how he he was the other day in an interview, right, and he Tom um, Tom Holland was with him, and he was talking about uh, Warcraft and and that he would paint the little soldiers and whatnot, and like the 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 guy was like trying to make fun of him, and suddenly Tom Holland comes with, oh man, that sounds fun, I want to play, you know, and, <laughs> and he's and he's like the best representation of a, of a, of a nerd right now. I love him. <laughs> That's that. But, but going back to Mass Effect, I am not sure. I, I he's too bulk, you know? I, mm, yeah. he's, too, he's too big, he's too bulky. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, you, you, you think he, he could play like, um, like an alien? Um, like what is the party he, member? Is it Garrus? Like, I uh, think it's Garrus who's like one of the bigger like alien party members. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If if it's if it that's the thing is he I don't see him as the main protagonist, mm-hmm. uh, but I see him uh, inside the 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 movie and there's no problem with it. I love when someone uh, takes a movie or a project with passion because they enjoy it, they've seen it, they live it. They they're like I know exactly what I'm gonna be and what I'm gonna do. Uh, but when you have such a big name, he's probably one to go for a. Uh, you know that big uh role right so mm-hmm. let's see what's up with that but uh, i'm cool with him being in it i'm cool with, I, i'm cool with him being in anything at Honestly. this point <laughs> yeah yeah i'm looking yeah, up yeah. Uh, look i'm looking up garris right now garris is like he's taller i guess he's not bulky but i think i think henry cavill if you wanted to pull off garris he could play a good garris uh, people in chat are recommending rex which henry cavill is way too sexy to play rex rex is way too unsexy uh, and so I don't know what you guys are talking about there, but I think I, I think he could he could rock with Garrus, or he could like just be a random character. You know, maybe he could be Commander Shepard if they go with like a, a male Shepard. I think something like that could work. But yeah, I, I mean, I'm right there with you, right? Like I think Henry Cavill um, in the in in the roles that I that I like him in, right? I love him. Um, like I I him as Superman, I'm like whatever, man. Like it, he, I think. None of what was wrong with Superman was his fault. I think he played a fine Superman. You know, I think I think he personally did a good job. Um, but like the, the thing I my poll for what I love Henry Cavill in is um, uh, Mission Impossible. Was it Fallout? Mission Impossible Fallout, the latest Mission Impossible movie. I fucking yeah, loved him in yeah. that movie. That's, <laughs> like, that's especially that's when he reloads I can't get mad at him for put, getting the mustache because that movie's yeah. so good that it's yeah. like, all right, yeah. if if it, you screwed up a couple scenes in Justice League. Like so be it. That movie wasn't gonna be good regardless if you had your face normal or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I say it, it was a me thing. You know, I was mad because that's how the movie started. You know, and and I didn't know any of the backstory to it. But I was like, Gosh, that was a moment thing. What's yeah, going yeah, on with so this face? What happened? What's going on, man? <laughs> yeah. Let's round out the Roper Report with story number five. Ubisoft yeah. updates its Splinter Cell trademark ahead of its reported game. Uh, this is Chris Scolian at Video Games Chronicle. Ubisoft has updated its Splinter Cell trademark ahead of the series' reported return. The company had previously filed a trademark for Splinter Cell video games in May 2017, but an updated trademark, which slightly changes the the lists of products it's designed for, was filed last week, the Game Post reports. Though the actual changes are minimal, the refilling suggests an intent to do something with the trademark. This matches previous VGC reports stating that Ubisoft is currently working on a new Splinter Cell game. Uh, VGC reported in October that Ubisoft has greenlit what will be its first mainline Splinter Cell game in a decade. So this is like this is small news because like things get trademarked all the time, and like a trademark doesn't necessarily mean that like 
something is going to happen, especially when you're looking at Splinter Cell and how you see you see Splinter Cell pop up in a lot of non Splinter Cell things, right? So it makes sense to kind of like keep that trademark going. And of course, it's Splinter Cell, so you never want to let go of that. But there's a little sliver of hope um, on top of that report that they are working on a new Splinter Cell game. And so, congratulations, Splinter Cell fans. Do you what does, do you like Splinter Cell? Does that do anything for you? Um, it doesn't. But mm-hmm. you know what does is that five days ago, uh, there's some rumors that came up. And, and and I'm reading from Game Radar, uh, Connor Sheridan, and basically he's saying that there's a open world stealth Splinter Cell game mm-hmm. that's in development. That's yeah. the actual rumor per se. So now suddenly putting all of this together and going a little bit back with when Ubisoft and is announcing and talking about how they're liking the idea of free to plays and uh, how to make this all these games so suddenly my, my, i'm a little bit worried with how are you going to get people excited about other than the original players and people that that love the franchise etc so how are you going to bring up another game and give it maybe that free to play vibe or open world style when you when you think about open world stealth what actually comes to your mind so, uh, so how do you get hyped? Right, like, I feel like that. Oh, I said, no, you're solid five, right? Like that's the game that yeah. I think did it right. But I don't, I don't know if a new, if a new Splinter Cell is going to be uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. You know what I mean? Like I'm right there with you in terms of like the worry that brings. You know, when when you talk about Ubisoft lately and their the way that they're shifting and moving with strategy and like a lot of the stuff that they've announced and like kind of kind of come come and come and gone. You know, things like Hyperscape, things like um, Defiant. No, Deviant, Defiant X. I think it's called Defiant X. That like I think is still still about to come out, right? And like there's like the Ghost Recon. There's like plenty of Division Heartland. They've announced X Defiant. Thank you, Chad. X Defiant. There have been plenty of things that Ubisoft has announced that have kind of like either shifted or disappeared that fall mm-hmm. into that free to play, uh, um, free to free to play formula that they're implementing. And so I really hope, I, like with this Splinter Cell thing, I really hope that they treat it like a premium game. I don't want it to be free yeah. to play. You know, like. I, if you want to make it open world, make it open world, but make it open world that makes sense, you know, because like that is going to be a shift for Splinter Cell. And if you're going to shift it, shift it in a way that feels like it is innovating on the franchise as opposed to, uh, no, we're just going to fit what works with Watch Dogs and Assassins and our other open world games into Splinter Cell. I don't think that's what people want. I think people want something a little bit more involved and more true to the brand. And so hopefully, I, hopefully that's what yeah. it is. I see it as, as you, you know, that's one of the things that Splinter Cell is a big name. It is a big name, you know. So whatever you're going to do, uh, so this has to be like uh, from marketing to the deployment of the game. It has to be released really strategic because you got to get a lot of people into it. I, if we've been talking about open worlds in, uh, since the beginning of the show, and then suddenly Halo is open world as well, and then you've got a uh, Horizon as an open world. Yeah, you, you got so many open worlds, and when you look at a franchise like this, that you go back to who is a fan of it. Uh, mm. You're older people, you know, it, you don't have that much time. You have kids, you have work, you have so many things. You, can, you can't take five open worlds at the same time. I don't know if this happens to you, but when you're like trying to review so many, you kind of get lost. February, like, man. That's what February is about to be. You know, February yeah, has Elden yeah. Ring, Horizon. Saints Row got delayed, thankfully, but like Dying Light 2 is February. Like it is going to be yeah. open world city with open world cities, right? Like it is going, it, 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 there. February is going to be a thing to reckon with in terms of video game releases, especially because we're talking about big, wide, wide games. And so, yeah, I think there is a fatigue that comes with that. Uh, and, you know, like it is what it is. I think some will stand like the more quality games are going to stand. But I think the less quali- quality open worlds are I think you're going to feel it right. You're going to feel that these aren't the, the these aren't standing up to like the big dogs. And, you know, what is that going to mean for the ones that don't stand up? Who knows, right? Maybe they don't sell as well. Maybe they maybe they don't perform. Maybe it doesn't matter, right? Maybe people buy into it regardless. But I think we'll have to wait and see on that one. But I don't know if it's my perception, but I feel like if one has to stand out, it has to be Splinter Cell. You know, yeah. Like everybody wants it. You know, like at least not me, but everybody wants it. Everybody yeah, like, wants to play. There's a lot it, so. of people out there, yeah. Splinter Cell fans, that really want another Splinter Cell for sure. Sure thing, yeah. Hombo, I cannot yeah. wait to see what they do with the next Splinter Cell game. But the release of the next Splinter Cell is just so far away. If I want to know what's coming out to Mom Grop Shops today, where would I look? 
Well, the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. You killed it. That was amazing. I'm so happy you caught it. Uh, out today, we got Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon for PS4, Xbox One, yeah. Switch, and PC. My Universe Doctors and Nurses for Switch. Vaporum Lockdown is out now on PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, and Xbox One. And then all six episodes of Power On, the story of Xbox, are out now. New dates for you. The Anacrusis will release on Steam, Xbox Series X, the Epic Game Store, Xbox One, and the Microsoft Store on January 13th, 2022. Independent game developers uh, Take Back Studios will be releasing the demo for their third-person casual adventure game, Fibbles, uh, for Steam on December 12th. Oh, that was yesterday. Well, there you go. That's now today. That's now today uh, for Fibbles, the demo. Uh, a Memoir Blue will launch on February 10th, 2022 for Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Game Pass, PS5, PS4, Switch, and PC. And then Assassin's Creed's crossover stories that is free DLC for AC Valhalla and Odyssey launches tomorrow. There you go. There you go. Remember, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games where you can write in, uh, get the show ad free and also get us your squad ups just like Joe did. Joe wrote in with a squad up and says, uh, having just got a got a Monster Hunter tattoo, I figured Christmas would be a great time to revisit Monster Hunter Rise and properly dig into that game. So anyone wants to squad up and help me hunt monsters uh please add me and let's get monster hunting if you want to play monster hunter with joe you can add joe with the switch friend code uh 1362 9608 6118 uh and then joe also said that i've included a link to the tattoo because i reckon you guys will dig it and you know what we got we, we got a minute or two kevin can you bring up this link in the yeah, I'll bring in, it up right we, and we, i want to see i want to check out this tattoo just a heads up no, yeah, i know they're past time, but i'm having <laughs> yeah, fun right cool, now we're having cool, a good time yeah, blast. yeah. oh my god <laughs> look at this Look at this. Look at that. That's, hey, yo, that's a very you tattoo. That's a, dude, forget the Monster Hunter oh tattoo. God, These Mario one. and Sonic tattoos are where it's at. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh my god. It's the I love cat. That. The little pet. The little, the little palico. Palico, thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, is, that is an amazing is tattoo. Great. If Put you want to play too. play some Monster Hunter with Joe, who is such a fan that he get that he gets tattoos. Uh, again, add it with the Switch friend code that we read before. Remember, you can go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in and let us know what we got wrong as we got it wrong, so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Nano writes in and says, the Final Fantasy Battle Royale is Final Fantasy VII, the first soldier. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, thank you. And then it looks like Nano also write in, uh, to, wrote in to say, the Henry Cavill interview was on the Graham Norton show, and he was talking about Warhammer 40K. Uh, Graham Norton also got that confused. Uh, between he got he also got Warhammer and Warcraft confused on the show, uh, and then Henry invited Tom to play Warhammer with him at the end, which is really <laughs> funny. This week's hosts for Kind of Funny Games Daily are tomorrow you're getting Tam and Gary Widow. Wednesday it's me and Andy. Thursday it's Tim and Tam for Tim Tam Thursday. And on Friday I'm closing it out for the year with me and Janet on Kind of Funny Games Daily. So get hyped. It's a big week. It's a fun week. Uh, and I'm happy to celebrate the last week of Kind of Funny content of the year. Uh, if you're watching this live on Twitch, after this is another Hellblade stream with Andy and Mike, and that is sponsored by NVIDIA. If you want to catch that stream later, you can subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny plays. Before we go, though, Frankie, Hambo, where can people find you? Well, you can catch me on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, anywhere, basically, even Xbox, PlayStation, whatever, as Hambo PR. Hambo is with an H at the front. Hambo PR. And that's basically where you can catch me. If you like uh, this type of content in Spanish, obviously, Yo Soy Un Gamer is where we're at, ready for you. Um, uh, dude, you know, this has been awesome, Blessing. You're a oh, great yeah. guy, man. Uh, it was so nice to meet you over at the, the Game Awards. And, and we were eating uh korean barbecue yeah we were and that was that yeah, was like, that was a struggle dude that was a struggle we, so made we, it, did our best. we made it work though because like you know korean barbecue you got to have a leader uh at the table who's down to like you know cook all the meat and just our table just didn't have anyone that wanted to step up and so it was me and you, you, need me and to you have stepped that. up you need to have a leader <laughs> yeah. for that and i'm glad that, that you guys stepped up <laughs> we stepped yeah. up we tag teamed it and we knocked it out the park we act we absolutely had a fantastic time my jacket still smells like korean barbecue i don't know if That's you're close right, to smell like it too right it, yeah. it was so much smoke you know it came to a point 
where I had to get up. I was like, you know what? Give me a second. <laughs> Yeah. Let me get out of the way because that thing was all over my face. Yeah, uh, it, was it was a great so time. Much fun. But yeah, yes, I'm, I'm also happy to meet you this weekend. Uh, and yeah, everybody go check out Hambo's work, Hambo PR on social media. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me. Remember, thing, bro. this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday live right here on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. We have a Patreon post show for those that are subbed at the silver level of patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. So stick around for that. Otherwise, until next time, game daily.